Hey, oh, got a little time lapse video for you. This is a little commission for a coffee subscriber, so forgive the little blurb at the bottom, but it's actually an appropriate self promotion. It's also my channel, so I can do whatever I want. But this is a like a clip from my Twitch stream. Recorded this, and then I put together a little time lapse for you. I. I'm drawing one of the Omu from Nashka. I've been reading the manga lately. Favorite thing ever. It's amazing. If you haven't read it and you're a Miyazaki stan like me, then I definitely recommend it. It's The more I read, the more I like it. And it just gets better and better, and the artwork is top-notch. And I think when I drew this, I'd been looking at it all day long, so it definitely kind of seeped in. He has this awesome hatch style, just like hatching everywhere. Even his speech bubble sometimes are hatching. It looks amazing. So definitely tried to absorb as much of that as possible before I did this. I started out with like a really thick, I think it's like a 0.8 uh, Copic fine liner. And I did kind of like a negative space border. And my goal was to do kind of like the white on the outside dark for all the plants in the forest and then a medium for the omu the big big bug i could not get the back or the plants dark enough though especially in like the lower left corner so you're going to see me go over there like a billion times and just keep filling it in over and over and trying to get it darker and i kind of made a little messy down there too unfortunately um, already you can see there's like some weird weird tangent overlap things happening but thankfully it's not like on the uh, focal point so it doesn't distract too much from the main image but i love drawing stuff like this because you can just kind of like have really loose pencils which i forgot to record <laughs> you can have really loose pencils and then because it's just like forest your lines can be really loose and it just like adds to the organic chaotic nature a little bit um so, I, yeah, I went super loose with the pencils on this one. I'm using this super fine uh, metal tipped pen. Well, I guess it's not that fine, I, but it's like this metal tip technical pen from, I, I want to say like the 80s. It's a Faber-Castell TG1. And it's refillable, which I love. I don't like wasting pens. And hatching with it is like so satisfying. You can see kind of in like the top left there. It's like not hard to get really consistent lines with it. So if you can get your hands on one of these bad boys, I definitely recommend it. It has the number two on it. I think they still sell them, but I think the sizing information changed. So I don't actually know what the two on mine converts to with the new one. It's kind of like how all the different fine liners have like different numbers on them. Like for some it's 0.2 and others it's just two. Maybe this is a point two. I, I'm not sure. I tried to really just like go heavy handed with the hatching wherever I could in the forest, which worked most of the time. But yeah, like here you'll see me going into the bottom left and there's just like a couple of decisions I made where, you know, they're past the point of no return and it kind of sucks because I can't go back and, you know, undo them at this point which is kind of the fun nature of inking and why you feel like real improvement when you do it a lot because I'm not going to make another mistake like that after drawing this and, you know, struggling through it. But yeah, there's kind of like that, that uh-oh moment. And there's like a million decisions being made about how you want to proceed. And sometimes it's the wrong decision and you have to figure out how to disguise it or just deal with it. Um, like I said, thankfully it wasn't in the focal point really where all that muck in the bottom left kept happening. These are really fun creatures to draw because um, they're pretty simple up on top. It's kind of hard to mess up. And then they just have like a billion little legs coming out of the bottom. It's a nice juxtaposition between these big shapes and eyeballs and plates. And then these tiny legs coming out the bottom. One thing I also wish I had done better is separated um, the legs a little more from the forest because 
the forest is also crazy. So I would have liked to put some bigger shapes, maybe like some shrubs or logs or something near the legs. Instead, I put that thing that looks like a bunch of hair around a stalk. Um, and then this like big bush would have been cool if I had maybe kept those like simpler shapes with less fringe on them so that the legs could have a little more room to breathe. But I think it's okay. It just makes it look like it's deep in a in a forest. Makes you wonder how it got in there, you know? I was really sweating when I did the the shells and the eyes. Because those are like, that is the focal point. It's kind of uh, important lines there. But once I had them in it, it felt good. And then I just kind of hatched around the form. But I, again, I didn't want to go too dark because um, I kind of planned from the beginning to put some screen tone on the bug. So I just wanted my lines to kind of add something to the form, give it a little bit more definition. But otherwise, I didn't want to didn't want to darken it too much. Meanwhile, I just am probably just going to keep going back over all the stuff in the forest to make it darker and darker. I kept struggling on that like snowman snowman looking plant behind the omu it's a hard hard thing to make that darker so you'll see me go over that a bunch too i was really surprised and proud of myself that i didn't smear any of this ink because i'm using um a fountain pen ink it dries pretty fast and i like it a lot it's the platinum carbon it dries pretty fast but it it, it does like to smear if if you don't give it enough time and this pen lays a pretty thick bead on which I like because it doesn't come up with the eraser as much when I put the eraser over everything I think there's a couple times where I like look when I watch this not in time lapse there's a lot of times where I look at the side of my hand just to double check that I didn't smear it and there is a little bit of ink on there but it wherever it's smeared I didn't notice so here I'm using a Pentel brush pen just going over some areas, adding a little more definition. Um, I kind of add like some fat hatching over some of the dark areas already just to push them a little bit farther back. I don't know if that was the right move. Um, I, I don't mind how it looks in the end. But that stuff way back there, I don't think the outline needs to be as thick. It would make a lot more sense for it just to have like a thin outline and just overall everything is pushed darker. So I could have done like some um, just like big hatch marks uh, or long hatch marks rather with a finer pen across everything just to push it back into the, the background a little more. But that's that's what I mean. It's like you can't really go back with inking. And so once you make a decision, you just kind of have to live with it. And next time I do something like this, I will remember this piece and go back. And that's just one of the fun things about inking is it's always a learning experience. And there's so many opportunities for it to go wrong. And there's so many opportunities for you to try something new and come up with something awesome. And I think experience really goes a long way. I should have thought a little bit farther ahead. There's a lot of these little um, Miyazaki has these everywhere whenever he's doing like a toxic forest scene. There's these little like snow snowflake things. They're like little hairy balls that are white on the inside. They're like little hairy balls that are white on the inside. And I put those all over. But when I put the screen tone over this thing, I don't ever... It, it's so hard to go and cut the screen tone out of that shape and have it look nice. So I wish I'd planned ahead a little bit farther. Same with that uh, dragonfly looking thing on the left side. Cutting that out, you'll see it's a labor, labor intensive thing. <laughs> I think real time this video is, it was about three hours start to finish, including the penciling. So it wasn't too bad. It takes ages to cut out these tiny little things and have it look good, I kind of regret trying to do it but in the end it worked out for these like coffee member rewards you get one every six months of being a member i it's only like it's, it's not that much money that i'm getting for this but it's a trade-off for monthly income 
steady, steady income. So I try not to spend, you know, hours on it, which, you know, the size also helps. I was trying to like cover a much larger area with screen tone. It would just take a lot longer. But there I covered up one of those snowflakes that was on top of the eyeballs with some uh, Copic opaque white, I think it's called. And then I didn't want to stand out. So I added it on all the others and it, it is a little bit brighter than the paper. So it kind of adds like a highlight effect on the on the eyeballs, which are kind of like ceramic glass domes, not ceramic. They're, they're kind of like a glass lens in the in the comic and in the movie. So it, it gives it a nice little highlight effect. And then here I had very limited screen tone, so I had to be crafty. And I took the screen tone that I cut out of the eyeballs and put it back on to the legs because I just had that, that little like two by three sheet of screen tone to do this with. And that is the end of the screen tone. Here are some shots of the finished piece. Thank you for watching. If you want something like this of your own, minor plug here, you can join my coffee and in six months you'll get some art in the mail. There will be links in the description. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.